God bless once again. This Pastor John Carlos, Senior Pastor of the Christian Pentecostal Church in Staten Island, New York. Amen. We've been studying the power of the Holy Spirit and who he is. As we continue speaking about it, we're going to see some interesting things today. First of all, Jesus Christ, when he comes here to our earth, shows us something about himself and about the Holy Spirit as well. Believe it or not, the Holy Spirit was responsible for Mary's child. The Bible tells us, look, here in the Word of God it says, And the angel answered and said unto her, unto Mary, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born in thee shall be called the Son of God. You can find it in Luke 1 and 35. It's also interesting to note, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise, or about to come, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Wow, this is interesting. So the Holy Spirit was the power of God that caused Jesus to become to earth, or to come to earth. We also see in Matthew 1 and 18 that the angel of the Lord appeared to, to Joseph, right? In a dream and said, Joseph, right? Thou son of David, fear not to take thee, Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Wow. So the real, the real father of Christ's body was the Holy Spirit. If you want to look at it that way, conceived in her, right? We also see that Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit as well. And, and we read in the book of Matthew, the third chapter, the 16th verse, it says, and the Savior was anointed. Now, anointed is an interesting word because it means to be chosen for a special calling, to be consecrated for a special calling. Look what it says. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened, and unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. In Luke 4 and 18, he himself says, The Holy Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because I have been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Again, we see in Acts 10 and 8, 38, Paul is speaking here, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing and all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, we see that the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus coming here were brought together by God himself. As we continue, you're going to see how interesting it is how Jesus came into the world and how he constantly tells us that the Spirit of God is upon him. Look here in Luke 4 and 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and hath sent me to, to the brokenhearted and so on and to the captives, and also the blind, and liberty that all of the bruised. We see that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, but they're also separate in some ways when we look at the Bible. That each one of them works, to, they work together as one. We also see that the Holy Spirit gave power to Jesus according to this. Listen to this. Acts 10 and 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed and so on of the devil, for God was with him. This is Paul speaking. Mm -hmm. We had talked about being sealed by the Spirit, where the Holy Spirit seals a person. And we see this happen to Jesus as well. In John 6 and 27, it says, For labor not for the meat that perisheth, but for the meat that endureth unto a everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give you unto you, 
For him hath God the Father sealed. And, and all of these things as we read them are showing us there is one God, but God is also the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And at times we'll see one prevalent over the others for whatever reasons that God chooses. We also interestingly see that this, that Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit to lead him. This is interesting. In Matthew 4, 1, we, look, look what it says. Then was Jesus led up by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Wow. This was a setup. But it's not the devil fooling Jesus, so to speak, into coming. It's the Holy Spirit bringing Jesus to a point, leading him to a point where he would face the devil in a, in a great battle, so to speak. In Matthew 12 and 28, Jesus speaks and says this, But if I cast out devils by the Holy Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Jesus was talking to people that were wondering who he was. So we see that the Spirit of God and, and Jesus Christ merge together. And yet, at some times, it seems they are separate, even in the ministry of Jesus. We, we read just like today, the Holy Spirit was, he filled the Savior. He was filled by the Holy Spirit. In John 3, 34, it says, For he whom God had sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Holy Spirit by measure unto him. Didn't he give that? Yes, he did. So Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, and Jesus was led by God as well. In Luke 4, 1, it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness that we just spoke about. Mm. Now, if we say he was filled, it means it was filled. Not partly, but filled. There were times also in Jesus' ministry and his life that the Holy Spirit came to help him, rather. We see in John eleven thirty three that Jesus sorrowed in the Holy Spirit. Something had happened. What had happened? A friend of his, Lazarus, had died. And he goes, he waits for a while. We know the story. He waits for the past the three days when people uh, would say, this person is dead, he's not coming back, right? And he comes to visit, and the two sisters are there. And of course, they were kind of angry because where was Jesus? He was a friend. How come he didn't come right away? And even one of them even accuses him, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. And look what it says. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, right? That was Mary. And the Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. What did he mean by this? Here is Jesus who was coming there to take Lazarus, his friend, out of death. And they couldn't see it. They were looking at the numbers. Three days, four days, he's dead. That's it. Nothing else can happen. And we see so many other times when Jesus not only used the Holy Spirit in power, but there were times when he rejoiced in the Spirit, the Bible says, just like we can today. In the hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit, and he said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and has revealed them only uh, them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. Wow. Even at Calvary, we see that the Spirit of God was there, even at the crucifixion. Look what it says in Hebrews 9 and 14 as, as our brother writes these words. Brother Paul. He says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Holy Spirit offered himself without spot to God, 
Purge your conscience from the dead works to serve the living God. Wow. We also see that the Holy Spirit raised God, Jesus, from the dead. In Hebrews 9 and 14, we read this. And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Holy Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. For Christ has once su suffered for sins, and the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened or made alive in the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 3.18 we also, we also read where even after the resurrection and Jesus spends those 40 days with his disciples, we see God working through him with the Spirit of God as well. Take a look at this in Romans 1 and 4. For Christ also had suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened or made alive by the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 3.18. Let's take a look at the, at the disciples. He told his disciples after the resurrection, he taught them how? Through the Holy Spirit. Until the day, he said, in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So even the things that Jesus spoke to them after the resurrection were empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we also see that the Bible tells us that the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Wow. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken our mortal bodies by his Holy Spirit that dwell in us. Wow. So the Holy Spirit is a very unique power. A unique power that is able to do all type of wonderful, powerful things in the lives of sinners, in the lives of the, of the saints, and in the lives of people who are just struggling through this world, not knowing who they are or where they are. We'll stop here, and next week we'll continue talking about the Holy Spirit. As we're, we're getting close to our ending of this Bible study, and if you have any questions, give us a call at the church. But God bless you, and have a blessed Thanksgiving.